Learning Technology Trends in 2014 is shaping up to be a very exciting year. Um, up to this point, we've seen a lot of successes within the consumer economy um, with the apps and devices and technology basically available to users at home. Now we're starting to see these are actually carrying over into the learning space. For 2014, I'm predicting that there's three major trends that we're going to see. Um, one is going to be what I call mobile first strategies are going to be developed. We're also, number two, going to see um, rise of the apps and um, in the enterprise. And finally, the third one will be the leveraging of APIs much more um, deeply and richly. We're starting to notice more and more people are using mobile devices, be they tablets or smartphones, in the business. Um, in fact, there are people who don't even use laptops in meetings. They're, they're bringing in their tablets now. Um, if you get those factors together and you combine them with uh, people just in their everyday going around outside of the office, they're going to be tuning into their tablets or their smartphone devices. So going forward in the future, it's no longer going to be acceptable to have mobile-friendly content. You're going to actually have to build content mobile from the ground up for mobile devices, tablets, and smartphones. Um, what does that mean? Well, if we look at your typical tablet and smartphones of today, they have um, different sensors. The manufacturers have gotten better with things like GPS, um, things with the touch screen um, capabilities, the weight, the form, just the form factor in itself, along with other sensors such as accelerometers and other things within them. So when I build a, a um, content or a learning solution perhaps, instead of it being stuck to a fixed desk type system, I can actually start using these sensors now to um, better the experience and give a much richer experience to the end user. So again, the um, first point, we're going to start seeing mobile first strategies where people are going to, we're going to develop content more for um, mobile devices. Traditionally, IT departments in organizations have led um, business process automation and the acquisition of platforms. That system has worked for us for several years. However, now in 2014, we're seeing more and more organizations and businesses saying, hey, you know, IT can't move fast enough for us. And this is for a variety of reasons. This is not a, a ding on IT departments. There's a lot of policies and procedures they have to deal with, so they can't move as fast as the business may want them to do. So what business is starting to do is saying, hey, we want these um, functions pulled back into our own um, departments or business units so we can handle them ourselves, and they can get the speed that they're looking for. One of the biggest problems that they're facing though is when they want to go back to the enterprise to interface or interact with data but they don't have the access to the APIs in order to pull the information they have um, available and if you look at most of the systems today they either have no API or their API structure is so weak to where it's not really using um, able to pull valuable data for another business unit to use. In order to move forward into the future this has to change. The APIs are going to have to become a lot more robust, they're going to have to become a lot more numerous um, in order so that each of the um, business units can actually start using that data from other business units, put it together. Um, one of the things I like to see whenever I do see APIs opening up and data is coming out of other systems is the way that one organization or one part of the business can grab data from another part of the business and totally rework and repurpose that data. They've, they're noticing great gains in um, market, getting the product to market, getting things into marketing, product development. And again, they're using a data source that wasn't traditionally available to them. So once we see more APIs start to be used, we're going to start seeing a lot more applications. A lot of organizations, um, actually a lot of users, are used to apps. We all remember a few years ago Apple's big marketing push where they said there's an app for that. And we've started noticing with other um, mobile devices, there are app stores that are coming up um, for the different types. So if you look at a typical user or a typical person's um, mobile device, you'll notice they may have 20, 30, 40 different apps that they have downloaded for, uh, for their device, thereby customizing the experience. Each of those apps in and of themselves provide a 
basic piece of information to assist that person with their lifestyle. We have apps for weather, um, traffic, shopping, music, entertainment, what have you. And again, each individual person is able to put these together as whatever fits their lifestyle. The business I really feel has started to take a look at the apps. These are no more just, no longer just fun little things, but if you look at what businesses do, if we look at the LMS, if we look at the different enterprise um, systems that are available, each of them could possibly have a mobile component to them. And in order to make it mobile, you're going to have to turn it into an app of some sort. Now, I'm not saying you have to get the entire learning management system and condense it into the tablet um, form factor, but if you looked at the overall system and said, okay, what sections can we turn into an app? that can be used by people on the go. So this ties back to my mobile first strategy where you have to um, start developing for the mobile devices, which also means developing these apps because it's the only way you're gonna actually get them into these mobile form factors. Now, if you can look at it and what we're doing here at GP Strategies, we're taking it a step further. Currently, when you look at the apps, it's all almost a one-way, um, interaction, right? I can go into a weather app, I put in my city or state, and it shows me my current weather, and that's about it. But if we look at um, an app, for instance, for the learning environment, I could get an app where I can see my training materials, I can actually see a customized training um, opportunity that's custom built for the form factor, in this case my mobile device. I can take that training, again on my mobile device, but it's not just take, I'm not just taking information, I'm also feeding the information. In the mobile first um, section, I mentioned that there are um, sensors that are built into these form factors now that we can actually use to collect data from the person taking the courses. So it's not a matter of what course did the person take, but I can also look at where did they take it at during um, what were the conditions around them that they were taking it at, for instance. So when I think about that, the possibilities are almost endless as to how training in the future is going to look based on this. But again, in order to have the apps to um, be usable, we're gonna have to expand our APIs, and we also have to lead with a mobile-first strategy.